I did it again. Oh shit, here we go again. So remember last year when I kind of accidentally came up with this whole new morphism thing? Yeah, I'm sorry to say that this story is gonna repeat itself this year. When I see a design trend and uh, it doesn't have a name, I usually try to think of ways to actually define it a little bit better and possibly give it a name too. So that happened with me naming Neumorphism last year in December. So there is another trend that's really getting popular right now and I decided to call it Glassmorphism. That's because it kind of imitates the look of frosted glass and that kind of see-through concept actually gives you better understanding of hierarchy and also of structure of what you're working on. So when you can see through an object, you can actually discern the relation between all the elements. It can be two elements, it can be three or more. And that transparency with a little bit of blur actually allows you to kind of understand where things are. And the blur is actually necessary because without it, it would be too chaotic because things would be just completely visible. And the blur just gives you a little bit of context to what's behind the current sheet of glass that's closest to you. But also it hides the detailed information so it doesn't really blend in with the foreground. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can achieve this effect yourself. And it's not really that difficult, it's just a background blur, but there is a couple things that you can do to actually make it look better than the default background blur. And there is also a difference between how Sketch and Figma handle background blur. So I think that this is something that's gonna be really useful if you want to play around with this trend. Okay, let's start with an empty artboard in Sketch. And I'm gonna show you a trick, cause for this style to work, you need a background that's a little bit more varied and colorful. So how to make one? So I started by dragging a random photo from one of my last videos and obviously this photo won't really be great for a background until we blur it. So let's add the maximum possible blur. Yeah, and this is pretty good, but it's not great because you can still see parts of the photo underneath, but you can't really blur it anymore, right? Or can you? Well, you can if you actually export the photo again and the result is blurred, so you can just blur it again. And now I simply make this whole thing bigger and position it so we have a really nice tonal gradient as the background. Now let's draw a rectangle, change the background color to white and for now let's turn off the border completely. Then let's go to blur, select background blur and nothing happens. That is because our object is not transparent yet so even though it's blurring the background underneath you can't really see it. So the logical thing to do would be to decrease the opacity, right? Well in a way, but it doesn't really work that way. Because if you just decrease the opacity of the object, as you can see when I duplicate the object, it doesn't really blur the lines underneath. It just shows a lower opacity, but the background blur just completely doesn't work. So we need to actually increase the opacity to 100% and decrease the opacity of the fill. That way we'll have the background blur. So the next step is to simulate the glass edge. And we do it by creating a one pixel border that's completely white with a slightly lower opacity. And to make our glass structures more friendly, let's round the corners, but of course this is completely optional. Now to make the depth of those elements and the 3D vertical spacing visible, let's add a shadow, but let's just not use the default shadow, please. I'm gonna set the Y value at 16 and then the blur at 32, and then let's pick a color for the shadow that's some darker shade of the background that we have here. And we can make it slightly darker and then play around with the opacity of the blur and the shadow so it kind of matches the element but it's not really over the top. And if you want the edge of the glass to be more visible you can experiment with having a two point border but make sure to then play around with the opacity because the border cannot really overtake the shape so it needs to just supplement it. It needs to be very subtle. When having many layers, you shouldn't really use the same blur and transparency value for every one of them. To make them stand out and to make it look a little bit more realistic, you should make sure that the element that's the farthest away from you has a slightly lower transparency. 
so basically it needs to be more opaque that's why i'm changing the opacity to 70 percent then the middle one has 50 percent and then the one at the very front can have 30 percent that way it's a lot more transparent and it creates the natural structure of the three layers okay let's move those to the side and let's quickly try a dark mode so to create a dark mode glass morphism, you basically need to change the color to black. And if you have an element that's already has the transparency and the background blur, it just works. But instead of pure black, I always prefer to add a little bit of hint of color. So I'm just gonna pick a dark gray that has a little bit of blue in it. Just gonna make it feel a little bit more natural. But remember that in dark mode, you should still keep the border at white because the edge is always lighter than the actual element. So that just makes sense. And you can use the exact same idea to duplicate this element and then play around with the opacity to create the layers that work well together. And that's it. We've created our first glass morphism sheets or panels in Sketch. So now let's try Figma. So here we are in Figma with an empty frame and the process is basically the same. So I'm dragging in an image, then blurring that image and changing the size and position to find a really nice satisfying vibe. Then we create the rectangle, fill it with white and also add the background blur in the effects. And here it works the exact same way as in Sketch, so you can't really decrease the opacity of the entire object, you need to decrease the opacity of the fill for the background blur to be even visible. So play around with the background blur value until it fits what you are aiming for. Because I think the default value for the background blur in all the tools is just a little bit too low. So let's also add a border here, and I'm not gonna add a shadow here as well, but they work the exact same way as in Sketch. So just round the corners and have some fun. And while we're at it, you can also duplicate this and try to create the dark mode version as well. The rules for this are exactly the same as in Sketch, because it really doesn't matter which tool you're using. Background blur and the glass morphism effect can be achieved in a really nice way in pretty much any tool you like. Okay, so this is how you do glass morphism in Sketch and Figma. And if you have any comments, just feel free to add them below this video and I'll be happy to reply. I'm gonna link my initial article in the description below. And we're also working on a CSS generator that's gonna be available at glassmorphism.com. But if you're a developer and you'd like to see how you can use CSS to create a similar effect on the web, I'm gonna link a post by Albert from my company who wrote about it in a bit more detail. And obviously, once again, there are some accessibility concerns and they are well-founded, but as I said before with new morphism, this style will work great if it's not overwhelmingly used in a project. So you shouldn't really make a project where every single surface is made of frosted glass. But if you can make one little object this way, it can actually supplement the other elements really in a nice way. So as designers, we shouldn't really be stuck to just one or two types of designs. But when a new trend like this comes up, you should be able to actually experiment and play around with it. Because that's what it's all about. We should have fun. Because otherwise we will be just machines repeating the same tasks and the same material design style sheets. And really that's not the point, that's not what I signed up for. I wanted to be a designer because I just wanted to make cool shit. And well, let's do that. Also, if you've made any projects using this style, don't be afraid to share them with our community. Okay, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video and I'm gonna see you at the other side of the glass. Cheers.